In this video, I want to tell you about six different kinds of non-combat encounters that'll make your tabletop role-playing games even more fun and exciting. Now, my absolute favorite thing to write is an entertaining encounter, whether it's a, a dangerous dungeon room or a surprise wilderness encounter, even like a, a fun aside during downtime. Writing up some sort of fun scenario for the players to engage with and get invested in the world and have fun with is the best. And as a GM that mostly runs, you know, the, the kind of heroic fantasy type games, I feel like there's already a lot of advice on how to make awesome combat encounters. You know, throw some cool monsters at the players in a cool environment, add some fun complications to the, the scenario, and you've got yourself a fun combat encounter. But there's more to role-playing games than just fighting monsters. And this past month, I've had an amazing time working on my new Patreon zine. It's a collection of 12 city-themed encounters. It's called Flick Silverpin's Guide to Bustling Streets and Unsavory Alleyways. It's a mouthful of a title. So I just finished up the writing of the zine. I, I still have the layout and the illustration to do, so it'll be available at the end of the month on my Patreon. I have a, a digital tier where you can get the, the PDF of the zine, but I also have a physical tier, so if you sign up in the month of March, once bustling streets and unsavory alleyways is back from the printer, I send out the physical zine to all of the, the patrons. But anyway, I've been working on this zine, trying to come up with really fun city-themed encounters. There are a couple of combat encounters. There's one where this mansion explodes and all these like magical on-fire zombies come out and start terrorizing the city. But I wanted most of the encounters to be ones that you could tackle without using combat. And it's really got me thinking about the just sort of the different kind of themes that you can have for an encounter that will help push your players to use their brains a little bit more instead of their fists. Now before I jump into the, the actual six non-combat encounter types, there's a couple of things to go over that will help you when creating your own encounters. So the first thing is writing a, a good encounter, just in general, and my philosophy on this is when you're writing, you come up with some sort of conflict that it has no obvious solution. This feels a little strange at first, especially because when I'm sitting there writing, I'm like, how the heck are my players gonna get out of this one? But they always find a way. And I think the most fun thing as a GM is watching your players figure this stuff out and come up with crazy solutions. And, and that's the fun I have as, as a game master. Second thing is the, the typical non-combat encounters are usually like traps and puzzles. People talk about chases all the time or like role-playing encounters. All of those are good, but the, the things I'm going to talk about are a little more loose and theoretical. And I think if you sort of zoom out a little bit, you can get more creative with your non-combat encounters. And then the third thing that's going to help with you creating the encounters is knowing the setting and the factions or the NPCs and also your characters, your, your player characters' motivations. So if you keep those things in mind, it'll be much easier to sort of fill in the blanks of of these six different types of non-combat encounters. Okay, so let's actually jump into it. Number one is a misunderstanding. So I think this is one of those great examples of there being no clear solution, and it's just really fun to throw your players in between these two different groups that are having a misunderstanding and seeing how they tackle the situation. Like I said, if you have your setting and your factions and NPCs figured out, this is a great way to sort of propel your, your story forward. So an example from Bustling Streets and Unsavory Alleyways is, is the this encounter I'm calling Unwelcome Guest. So there's this troll named Hrunga who usually watches over I guess lives under uh, one of the bridges that's kind of close to town. And Hurunga usually collects a toll at this bridge and he uses the money to go into town and buy his favorite plum tarts. But recently a new bridge has been built and people are using that one. So now Hurunga doesn't have money for his tarts. So he's come into town. He's 
sat down on a, a cloak vendor in the middle of the market, kind of destroying their, their stall in this market and isn't moving. So you have all the people in the market that are worried about their stalls getting destroyed and you have Hrunga who's really upset because he just wants some plum tarts and is bummed that his like job has kind of gone away. So what are the players going to do? You know, if they help the people in the market, they'll probably get a discount. If they help Hrunga, maybe they'll have a big troll friend at a later time. How they accomplish this goal, nobody knows. Fun encounter achieved. Number two is a good mystery. So I find that nothing really motivates my players like putting a good mystery in front of them. You know, there's something about uncovering secrets that really just captures the attention. And especially when there's, you know, the possibility of a cool reward at the end. So another one of the encounters in the zine is called There Can Be Only One. So there's this rumor going around that the players can kind of hear about it from a few different sources but basically all of the swords in the city are being like broken and shattered and nobody can figure out what's going on so you know my thought is the players probably come into the city want to spend some money upgrade their equipment buy a new sword but the blacksmith is out of swords all their swords are broken and what the players can eventually figure out is that there is this sentient sword called star splitter that's like floating around at night and the the only thing this sword wants is to break other swords is to to be the only sword and it has this magical power that when stars shine on it it can break through any sp- other sword, any other blade. So if the players really have come to town looking to to upgrade their sword, maybe finding this awesome sword is motivation enough to solve this mystery. Okay, the third non-combat encounter is a threat. So this is like what happens when combat isn't an option. So in the zine, there's an encounter called Dragon Attack, where this big Purple dragon comes down, lands on the gates of the city, and kind of gives everybody this ultimatum. So I, I guess I should explain. Well, yeah, I gotta explain. So <laughs> this purple dragon doesn't have a, a like gold and jewels and magic item hoard. Their hoard is cats. They're they're like a, a an old cat lady dragon. They just have thousands of pet cats, and <laughs> they come down to the city and they're looking for one of their missing cats. And they sort of land and give this ultimatum of like, hey, I can smell my cat is here in the city somewhere. Somebody took it. Give me back my cat or I start wrecking things, start destroying the city. So there's a little surprise of what's actually going on with this cat. But if the players don't want their their city to get destroyed, they got to jump in and do something. But this is a big big crazy purple dragon so fighting it especially like in the middle of the city not the best idea so how are they going to solve this problem how are they going to deal with this threat i have no idea but it's going to be really fun to see how they do it so on the flip side of a threat number four is a game this is just kind of a, a diversion a low stakes encounter just to have some fun. For bustling streets and unsavory alleyways, I've come up with this game called Dragoon. It's a it's a betting game that's kind of like blackjack but with dice. And the the sort of theme is you're approaching a dragon to sort of tame it so you can ride it, but it's it's like a blackjack game. So one player rolls a d20, the other players are rolling a pool of d6s to try and get as close to the d20 roll without going over. There's betting and stuff. I present this sort of bounty hunter, lizard folk NPC, and that can maybe lead in some other directions in some other encounters in the zine. And maybe by playing this game, the characters can win some more money to then go on and spend at number five shops. So I love, love, love giving my players magic items. And I just think it's so fun to write up a unique shop. I think, I I feel like a shop is successful when it has cool stuff that the players want, but also can lead them in directions for more adventure. You know, sometimes it can be a little boring to go on like the the shopping side quest, especially if you like split the party apart and each person's trying to find their own thing. 
Uh, you know, maybe it's better to take shops, you know, out of the game and kind of do it in between sessions or something. But I also think it can be really fun. I've included three different shops in this scene. So one is a map shop where players can can get maps of local areas and also like treasure maps for, for far off things. And, you know, it, it leads to adventure. Maps lead to adventure. There's also Ryba's Floating Aquarium. It's uh, it's like a fishing boat that floats in the air and has a bunch of different fish that uh, your, the players can buy. And it doesn't seem like the most practical pet for an adventure, but each of the different types of fish has some cool stuff going on. And if the, the players take good enough care of the fish, they'll, they'll start talking and, you know, become more like companions than pets. And there's also Dot's Bot Shop, which... Uh, sounds like it might be another like pet companion kind of thing, like uh, you know a little robot companion. But the these robots are a little more practical. They kind of have one thing that each robot is good at doing, and and that's it. So they're they're more like tools, and there's there's a little bit more of a story going on, a little bit more of a mystery with Dot. And I don't know, I just have way too much fun coming up with these magic item shops. Okay, the sixth non-combat encounter is just. A big fun surprise. Throw a surprise at your players. This can be some sort of information that they didn't know that maybe unlocks another part of the adventure in a, in a fun way. It can be a new tool to, to help them along in their adventure, or it can be a, a new complication that sets them back on their adventure. But the, the trick is to make it a surprise. Have it come out of nowhere, and that's what's going to make it really interesting and fun. So in bustling streets and unsavory alleyways, one of the big surprises I've included in these encounters is called the Weaving Doors. So this pickpocket character comes up, steals something from one of the players, and runs off. They have these magic boots that make them run faster, so they're hard to catch. And they kind of disappear into this weird door. It's just like... Fancy, ornate stone brick doorway that's kind of set into an old crooked fence in a, in a dirty alleyway. And if the players can successfully investigate this doorway, I, I'm not going to give too much away, but if they investigate it and figure out what's going on, they basically realize that there's this sort of uh, interconnected portals that sort of appear and disappear all over the city. So they can basically figure out a way to teleport all over the city, this new mode of transportation through this giant city. It feels like this super useful thing, but they don't just get handed this this new way of transportation. They got to figure it out and deal with this surprise of having something stolen from them. So there you have it. Six different types of non-combat encounters. You got misunderstanding, mystery, threat, game, shop, and surprise. Let me know what your favorite non-combat encounters are down in the comments. I love, love, love to hear stories from people's games. If Flick Silverpin's guide to bustling streets and unsavory alleyways sounds cool to you, check out my Patreon. It'll be available by the end of this month. I've talked about a lot of the encounters that are in the zine, but there are a few more that are really fun that I'm, I'm leaving secret. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! <laughs>